Hello Internet, Seth Skorkowski, and for today's Game Master Toolbox, I want to show you something a little fun that I've used for a couple of my adventures, and that is random dungeon building tiles. And what these are is that during the game, players will draw these cards, and using them, they will build a giant underground cavern for them to explore. I got the idea for it from a board game, and at the time our campaign was set in the Underdark, which is kind of a huge, unmappable cave system beneath the Earth. So using graph paper, I sketched out several different cavern squares, lining them up so any of the entrances would be in the middle of each square. I then printed them out on heavy cardstock to give them some rigidity, and then cut them all out. Two of the cards were larger, a begin point with four possible passages for the players to take, and then an end point with four possible entrances. Uh, this end point was a fortress of some wizard that the players were trying to find. I then measured out the distance between the beginning and end points on the board and then fixed them to the table. As the PCs explored the cavern, players took turns drawing cards to determine what each new section would be. There are basic passages, some branching, others straight, and then there were also cavern chambers. Any encounters along the way I would then determine randomly. Each card I then marked with a red arrow to show what the entry point was when it was lined up with the passage from the previous card. By changing the location of these start points, a Game Master could use multiple copies of the same card and just mark them all differently with different red arrows. Another thing that I marked was that I highlighted sections that were considered steep enough to require climb checks or some other skill roll in order to bypass them. One color represented up, the other color represented down, and it just depended on the perspective of the red arrow entrance. Now some cards had their own obstacles, like water that the PCs might have to cross. Maybe blind things lurk in the depths, ready to gobble the player characters up. Or the bridge across is rotting, and only one player character can cross it at a time, making it really scary when something inevitably swoops down to attack them. There were chasms that the PCs might have to cross or go around. Two of the cards had pools. Maybe they grant healing, or maybe someone could teleport between the two pools. And if you choose the teleport option as the Game Master, uh, the Game Master might have to place randomly where that second pool is if they activate it, if the player characters haven't discovered the second pool yet. There was also ruined villages and active villages. Maybe they belong to friends or foes, that's up to you, but then the PCs might have to sneak away or go through town, just depending on which option you chose. Two of the cards had statues, these giant idols. Maybe finding them could be a secondary quest along the way. There was one that was filled with giant crystals, and another had a great cliff that the PCs would have to climb if they wanted to cross that card. One was a fortress for a powerful villain that was in the area that was actually chasing them throughout the entire adventure, and any players that drew this card might have to sneak their characters away or through it, or they might just decide that they want to attack this now-discovered secret citadel of their enemy. Depending on which cards get drawn, it's difficult to guess exactly how long the game is going to take, or how long it's going to take for them to cross the board. It's also possible that the passages line up so that it's impossible for them to access any of the entrance points along the destination card. If that happens, Game Masters should say that the players somehow ended up on a level that was above or below the actual destination card, and then maybe they could then go back a couple squares, choose one of the entrances that didn't lead anywhere, and then say that is the way that they need to go, and from there on forward the players can just finish off the rest of the board. It is a risk to use this method with the cards, but it's not flawless, but it is a lot of fun. Uh, we've used these on two different games. Uh, one time they did actually have to go back a couple squares and try again in order to completely cross the board. We had a lot of fun with them, but this is not something that I recommend that you do very often as a game master. Think of this as more of a special occasion sort of adventure than making this your default way that you do a dungeon. And when I say that I've used this twice, there was also a five-year gap between the times that I used this. So once again, Game Masters don't overuse this technique. But it was a whole lot of fun for us, and I highly recommend that Game Masters give it a try for something just a little bit interesting or a good twist on the standard dungeon crawl. I added links below for the scans of my original pages. Feel free to print them up. Uh, my drawing isn't that great, obviously. I wasn't even able to find all the original pages. Some of them have gone missing over the years. But just think of them as a good starting point or an inspiration tool for any that you want to make on your own. 
Now, the card method is not for everyone. Some players might love it, other players might hate it. Everyone is different. And game masters, uh, you're going to have to gauge exactly how you feel that your players are going to take doing the drawing cards to build their own dungeon. But from my own experience, this was a lot of fun uh, for everybody that was at my table, and hopefully it'll be a lot of fun for your table too. That is it for this episode, pretty short and sweet. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you want to see some more of my Game Master Toolbox or other videos, just hit the subscribe button. Until next time, players, have a great day.